So, Dr. Patricia Sazna, uh, how do you conceptualize radicalization and what's the difference with uh, extremism? Um, there are two main differences. We think of radicalization, and this is what literature says, that it's a, a movement that has a, a deep social change for its goal. So radical, radix, it comes from Latin radix, which means the root. Uh, so radical movements are movements that want a radical social change. Now, they can, so the two main differences with extremism are on the use of violence and on exclusivism or uh, applying this notion of us versus others. I will explain it. So uh, radicalism is a universal ideology. For everyone the same, not exclusivist, it can be very uh, radical and extreme as, uh, for example, changing the system for more equal, uh, more inclusive, but it will not be us versus them. It will not be exclusivist. Whereas extremists, extremism has this very chauvinist notion of social relations. So there is also always an enemy. There, there are always them that we need to confront. And, but the primary difference is on the use of violence. So radicals will be very reluctant to use violence, although they may sometimes use violence. And history has shown us that it does happen. But uh, extremists, they, on principle, espouse violence. I mean, the, uh, they will get their goal. They will get the rule of the few, the rule of, the, the, of us, uh, in a way through a tool of violence. So these are the two differences. And when it comes to to the Europe, for instance, uh, how does uh, radicalization per se represent a challenge and a threat? Uh, I would not say it represents a threat. So if we have three notions, resilience, you know, which is everything that makes us strong and uh, uh, able to resist fear and all that, we have a concept of risk. I mean, there's, there are some phenomena that have a potential negative effect, but don't have to have them. And there's a threat, which clearly has a negative connotation, right? So I would put the radicalism and radicalization in the risk slash resilience category. So uh, radical movements are needed in a, in a society to keep the pressure on the state, on the system, to reform, uh, to do its best to be more and more inclusive. Whereas uh, it can also, radicalism can also be a threat. Uh, it can also be a risk, not a threat precisely. So a risk because radicalism can turn it into extremism under certain circumstances and then it becomes a threat. Extremism is a threat, but radicalism is only a risk. This is how I would frame it. And what would be the tipping point in this discourse? Right, a tipping point can be something very simple. It can be a call to violence, a call to arms by a leader. It can be like uh, al-Baghdadi, the leader of the Daesh, the Islamic okay. State, um, in 2014 and 2015, 15, he, he made the, these calls to violence. And this was a tipping point. I mean, people around the world, some, not only Muslims, but also people who converted to Islam, under certain circumstances, and there's always an amalgam of, of uh, push factors that push people to violence, they, they thought that they really need to do something as individuals and attack another individual. We had a, a flurry of violence in, in certain uh, countries around the world. So the, the tipping point can be as, sim as simple as a call to violence. But there are other uh, tipping points that are more complex to explain because these are economic uh, conditions in combination with uh, personal psychological disposition of an individual. Um, so a tipping point can be something very, very different at a different time in history. And is there any policy implication for tackle radicalism? Yeah, I, so I guess radicalism should not be tackled. Maybe tackle is not the verb that we would use, but it's a challenge that needs to be taken into account. So when radicals are, are vilified, when they are de demonized, they tend more, they are more likely to turn extremist 
they more they are more likely uh, more prone to taking up arms so i think a very wise policy of including radical ideas in the societal in the public sphere and the debate is the right policy not to label them terrorist organizations like is happening in some countries around the world not to push them outside of the society but actually have them in then the risk is under control and it doesn't become a threat. This, I guess, would be a very general policy recommendation that I would put forward. So you would recommend a cultural approach rather than a security one? Oh, for sure, yes. Um, well, security approach to... See, I think the, the, the misperception of radicalism comes from the fact that we tend to think about it through the word radicalization. It's a, it's a very misused concept. I mean, we use the word radicalization to say that someone has taken up arms. Yeah. When, when in reality, a radical has become extremist, not radical. I mean, that person was already radical, okay? So I think we need to... It's, it's a very uh, difficult thing for me to say, but there's a positive element to, to uh, radicalism. And this is the, the notion that we keep missing, if you see what I mean. Whereas extremism is something that really should be prevented, but it can only be prevented by espousing the positive, the progressive element of radicalism. Yeah, that's very complex, but you clarify it very well for Thank us. You. Thank you very much. Thanks.